Hey guys, AV Songbird here. <laughs> I'm so mad. I just spent the last half hour sitting here recording a video for you guys and I was all excited because I thought I got my webcam working and I was going, yay, I can stop recording on my cell phone now. I'm all excited, right? So I sat here, I recorded for a half hour and it was me talking about updates and it's probably a good thing that the video didn't work because it was just me sitting here rambling and because when I'm nervous I ramble. You've noticed if you're anyone that's ever watched any of my other videos. Just me sitting here rambling like I had someone in the room with me and I've said things I'll never say again. Dirty minded people do not take that wrong. It was not meant that way. But um just me being candid and me, you know, making fun of myself and mocking myself and stuff, because I'm good at that. <laughs> but, um, I... <laughs> trying to remember some of what I said that I am able to repeat, because my stupid webcam hates me. I'm on my phone looking up at my webcam. I'm glaring at it right now. But... I posted the songs last night and I posted some of the playlists last night and I was laying in bed all night long going, you know, all I gotta do is sit up, swing my legs over, put them on the floor, come around the bed, it's eight feet from my bed to my computer. I could go delete that real quick before I embarrass myself and anyone sees me singing and I didn't do it. And I woke up to text this morning of people that have seen the video that have my number that are like, oh my god, you know, that are, don't you dare delete that. <clears throat> and I've had other people already adding me and stuff, so. I haven't deleted it. I won't delete it, guys. I promise you don't have to worry about it not being there if you do like the songs that you heard or the poems that you read. I was really excited, actually, more about posting the poetry, and I was scared as shit about the lyrics and my voice. Which is still kind of gone today. But yeah, most of the video and I laugh because... Look! Look! I'm wearing a different color today. <laughs> you missed it. And the video on my computer to stop the feedback, I plugged in my headphones. And look, my headphones are blue. <clears throat> but I had a friend go, well, blue should be your signature color. You wear it all the time. And I laugh because it kind of is and has been my entire life. Because I don't know if you can see it from that part. Can you see my eyes are blue, but I inherited my grandpa's eyes, which his eyes were really cool. They always changed color, and depending on what color I wear, mine go from blue to blue-greenish to gray, and when I'm pissed, they're really gray, and yeah, wearing blue, I've been told, makes my eyes more blue, so I've always worn blue. And it's my favorite color. It's calming, it's soothing, it's mellow. It reminds me of water and being a Pisces. And I learned how to swim before I learned how to walk. So yeah, I really, really love blue. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, really, the video you guys missed out on was like a half hour of me doing this. And yeah, talking about how no one would watch this video, you know, because it is just me rambling and how if my writing does take off and actually goes somewhere, if my songs take off and go somewhere, sorry about the squeaky chair, um, I could at least come back to this video, you know, if my writing or whatever does take off. And I could go, you know what? No matter where you go, no matter how big you get, no matter how big you think you are, you were that girl sitting in that chair way back when. Yeah, rambling about the color of your eyes and why you like the colors you do. And I told a story about how um, I trip over my own feet. I'm a clod, okay? There was one Halloween I went trick-or-treating when I was younger out with... No, this wasn't last year. This is when I was younger, younger. Actually supposed to be old enough to go trick-or-treating, but I went out with all my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my parents, my brother. And there was like 30 of us, and I told everybody, I stood there, dressed as a baby, had the bottle, had the robe, the whole bit. I'm sitting there, and I told everyone else, don't trip over the curb. Do not trip over the curb. 30 people. Crossed the street, over the curb, not a problem. Didn't even have to look at the curb, walked over the curb, not a problem, right? It's a little curb. It's not like a 40-foot wall. Who was the only person in the group to trip over the curb? 30 people. I'm the one that saw the curb. I'm the one that warned everybody about the curb. I tripped over the curb. 
So if down the road, if one of my songs is, you know, being sung by someone, or if I get a book published, or if I have poetry out there, or whatever. Jennifer Lee, I know you're the one of the only people watching out there, because hi, Mom. <laughs> but if there is someone out there watching besides Jennifer and hi, Mom, <laughs> you tripped over your own feet. You're the girl that bites your uh, fingernails if you don't paint them first. Yeah. You're still biting your nails right now, aren't you? But, um, you're the Sims addict. You're the one that sits and geeks out in Guitar Heroes on the weekends. Yeah, I play it on easy. But, to be fair, I play with my stepson. And he rocks out on the drums. And if I play it on easy, I know I can bring him back in if he fails. So I can use that excuse that that's the only reason I stay on easy. Shh. Shh. It's just between us. You know, because it's just me and my mom watching. Hi, mom. She's going to call me up after this and go, I don't watch your videos. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, this video is mostly, hey, Jennifer, stay humble. Remember you're the girl that cusses too much? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, um, to you guys, if you are actually watching this video, I'm so sorry. I don't understand why people are saying they like watching me and my videos. I laugh because I go through my playlists, and when I upload, they ask me to put in a custom thumbnail, and I'm not a graphic artist. You know, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I'm just learning it as I go, and they ask for a custom thumbnail, and I'm looking at the thumbnail, and I pick a picture. You know, I take a still out of each video I do and do the thumbnail, because I can't draw. Not a graphic artist. I used to draw in high school, but... I could see me doing little stick figures in blue shirts and doing custom thumbnails out of them, you know, do like a stick figure type deal so that down the line in the playlist, if you look at all the pictures back to back, put the pictures back to back, it like it's a guy jumping over a hurdle, but it takes like 40 <laughs> videos to get there. But um, I used to draw in pencil, but I don't draw for shit. Seriously, don't ask to see them. I hid them away. But, um, yeah, it makes me feel like people will think I'm self-centered or that I'm shallow or self-involved because I go through my playlists and <clears throat> it's just rows of pictures of me. <laughs> and I'm going, this is the girl that bites her nails. I grew up a tomboy. I had two brothers, one five years older, one five years younger. Most of my friends are guys. You know, I never cared about what my hair looked like or what I wore or... I was a tomboy playing in the dirt, gardening, you know, roughhousing with the guys, and I don't wear makeup now. I mean, you'll be lucky to catch me in mascara and maybe paint my nails. <laughs> you know, I'm still jeans, t-shirts, and boots. Damn it, boots. Not tennis shoes, boots. But, um, I've always been a humble and down-to-earth person, and I'd look at my playlist, and I'm afraid people will think that I'm self-centered, and I'm not. It's weird for me to look up and see pictures of me up there and I'm going, no, it's okay. They know that, you know, you're reading your stuff up there. They'll get it. And then people will surf in from all over the internet, you know, that are looking at the music because the music pops up under music now. God help me. And uh, I'm terrified that they're going to think I'm self-centered. So you guys that have been here with me from the beginning, you know better. Sorry about the dogs. I've got my bedroom door open because no one's home at the moment but me. It's a rare occurrence anymore since, yeah, we've got more people living here now, so. The house is kind of Grand Central Station. All you people out there with family, do you know what it's like? Yeah, madhouse from hell. <laughs> Happy madhouse, but a madhouse from hell. But, um, God, I'm not self-centered. I'm down to earth type person, love to help people, can't lie to save my life, I'm not kidding. Growing up, my mom would look at me if I tried to lie, Jennifer Lee. And I couldn't lie to save my life, I still can't, so I don't even try. But I figure I shouldn't have to, you know, I don't lie, it's just not something I do. But, um, yeah, so getting over seeing me on camera, I don't understand when people tell me that they like watching me being me on camera because 
it's just me talking, you know, it's just like we're all sitting in a big room and me and the whole two people that are watching this are just sitting around, you know, screwing around watching the television, you know, clicking the channels, playing games, you know. I should go play Fable. I love Fable. Two, not three. I've never played three, two. Gotta be two. <clears throat> but it's, you know, I talk to you guys... But I consider you guys my friends, all two of you that are watching. Three, maybe, if you haven't left. You know, I get to be open and honest with you guys, and it's just me sitting alone in a room with my dogs and my camera, so it's easy for me to be open and honest and sit down and be who I am with you guys. And you guys know me better than people that walk up and meet me on the street, but I'm shy in person on the street. If this video ever gets out there, if my writing ever gets out there, people come walking up to me and if I ever get recognized, oh my god. Hey, you're... Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I can dream. You know? I still one day would love to have my book out there or love to have my songs out there. And if, you know, people see me, I want to remember. You know, and even if this never goes anywhere, you know, I want to remember this. The whole being afraid and being unsure and stay who I am. Because you may reach great heights in your life. You may do great things in your life with whatever you're good at. You know, you may follow your talents to the ends of the earth and reach incredible heights. But you should never forget where you came from. You should never forget... The people that got you there, the people that were with you from the beginning, the people that knew you, that loved you, that took the time out for you and let you be who you are, that reminded you who you are. You know, the people that call me out when I think I'm getting too big for my britches and tell me you're the girl that tripped over the curb. Yeah, you're the girl that tripped over the curb. 30 people you tripped over the curb. You know, and... We all need those people, and I laugh. All my family lives out of state now. <clears throat> most of my family lives out of state now, and most of them are busy. So on a daily basis, it's usually me, my dogs, my family anymore. <laughs> and my characters, they're all up here. I hear voices. I can get away with it. But, um... <laughs> I need to keep me humble, and I need you guys to help keep me humble. And, you know, <laughs> to be my friends, you guys are awesome, you guys that are here for me. And it really helps to know that I'm not alone in this room, that I'm not spending all my time working on these stories and loving writing poetry and music and stories and coming up with these things. and putting them down on paper for no reason, that it's not... I've never thought of writing as a waste of time. I've had people who said I don't get it, or I've had more people, especially lately, people hear, you know, that I'm a writer and they go, well, write something about me, and... Guys, oh my god. I'm not saying my writing's clean all the time. Irish and Native American blood, remember? I'm not saying... <laughs> That I'm a saint. I'm not saying that my mind doesn't go down a not quite primrose path sometimes. But, you know, I'm not sitting here spinning out stuff in public. And I have these guys, hey, you want to write a story? No. Mm -mm. No, no. I'm not writing that kind of story for you guys. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because I can see that going out wrong. <laughs> You know, housewife, family to answer to. You know, I'm trying to keep it clean. But um, <clears throat> it's funny, though. People come up to you when they find out you draw. They ask you to draw a picture for them. They find out you write. They want you to write a story for them. Or they expect you to produce it on the spot, you know. And it's kind of fun because I've got people that ask me, well, can you write a story about this or that? And I find it challenging because... It's like having an assignment, you know? You sit down and you're like, okay, this is what I gotta do, and I do that. I love when I'm writing and my husband asks me to change things, and people ask me to change things, or say, what if? 
I've got stories I've written four or five different versions just to watch how what ifs play out. I love that and exploring the possibilities because <clears throat> if you take and you change one decision in a story and you delete a story and you go back, you may find yourself in six months sitting there going, oh shit, I love the story better the other way. I hate how it came out this way. And by then it's too late. It's already gone. You can't get it back. And you're sitting there going, oh well, I guess this is it. And me, I have four or five different versions of the same story and I'll go back six months down the road and I'll go, okay, I hate the way this one came out, but I can go back to the other save, to the alternate. I have stories, I have four or five alternates. <clears throat> you know, but... It's a very involved process, and learning how to do it on the fly, and learning how to adapt myself, and what I do to people, and what people want to see, and what people would like me to do. I love that, because it keeps me flying, you know, it keeps me creating, it keeps me inspired, and I love meeting new muses. I have a handful of muses I go back to, people I've met in my life that inspire me, and no, I'm not naming names because some of them aren't even aware of it, why would I tell you guys? Some of the fun is having my muses' identities to myself, but I have people I think about and write about. and. No, before you say it, it's not that kind of deal, you sick, twisted people. It's not. A muse is not that. There's a difference between crushes and musery. Okay? It's not that kind of a deal. Jack, stop growling. And I laugh because it's not that kind of thing. There are people that inspire you by their actions or their words or sometimes the way they look. But you know, the way they are, but there are people that just inspire you just by being, and I have a handful of those in my life, and people I talk to that inspire me, you know, and you should, I mean, they keep you on your toes, they keep you creating, and if you don't have muses in your life, and people to inspire you, if you live in your bubble, if you live cut off, which I did for a long time, you know, I know there's a lot of us out there that sit in our room and go, God, life is happening to everyone but me. You know, and it sucks because your life shouldn't be that way. You should fall in love with your life. You know, I wanted to fall in love with my life again, and I'm getting there. I love getting to get out there and get my writing to people and making these videos for my mom to watch. <laughs> She's going to yell at me because it's too long. But I love doing that, and you should fall in love with your life. And if you're not, then you need to sit back and ask yourself is what you're doing and what you're giving up of yourself worth it in the end because when you're old and when you're sitting there on the porch swing old and gray you know and grizzled you're gonna look back and you're gonna regret the time that you gave up who you were and you sacrificed yourself just to keep other people happy and <clears throat> not saying you shouldn't make other people happy. I love making other people happy, but you don't need to sacrifice who you are to do it. You don't need to compromise yourself, you know, to pretend to be someone you're not. If you should be who you are and keep other people happy, and if you can find that balance in your life, then you've got it knocked. <laughs> because I'm trying to get there. I'm still getting back to being me. This is not me. Talk to me in six months after my running training is well underway, and I'm on the road to being me again. So, <clears throat> I know, I'm dragging on too long, and I'm preaching right now, I'm sorry, but I know what it's like. I spent way too long trying to be someone I wasn't, and convincing myself that there were things that were wrong with me because I wasn't perfect as a, you know, in the roles I was being. You know, and it's not about being perfect. It's about being who you are, and it's about being happy being who you are, and accepting who you are, and your shortcomings, and tripping over your own feet, and biting your nails, and playing too many video games, and maybe being too much of a homebody. You know, it's about being that person and owning it, and falling in love with your life as it is. And if you don't change it, you know, no one's going to do it but you. You need to kick your own ass and get out there and live your life. So, if it takes the words of me on my screen to convince you to do that, I can do that. Okay, well I'm going to go before my phone cuts off. 
you guys have a good day, me and mom that are watching this video. And I hope you have a great day. This has been A.V. Songbird. Bye, guys.